achievements give him pro potential and medical school options. Teammate Alex Kim's fleet feet helped him beat the top-ranked player in the nation in Stanford's semifinal win over Florida. As always, Stanford brings all-American intensity. Virginia Commonwealth finds itself in unprecedented territory. Daniel Anderson has led a Cinderella run that has seen a school that never before reached the round of 16 pull off what seemed impossible to reach the title match. Could this be the Rams' moment in the sun? This is the 2000 NCAA Men's Team Tennis Championship. In the championship match, it's the upstart, Virginia Commonwealth, against the top-ranked Stanford Cardinal, bringing in a gaudy 27-1 and record. The weather in Athens, a typical late spring day, 82 degrees, quite humid, the skies overcast. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jack Edwards. Glad you could be with us for this best-of-seven point championship event. There are three doubles matches that are played in the NCAA men's championships. The school that wins two of those three doubles matches ends up getting one point. Then there are six simultaneously played singles matches. And because those six singles matches are played simultaneously, the fortunes of teams can swing, ebb, flow, and be completely overturned just in a matter of moments. Take, for instance, what happened to Paul Podbury and Peter Handoyo of Tennessee, two of Tennessee's better singles players in the national semifinals, leading Virginia Commonwealth three points to two. It seemed as if the Vols were going to close it out and move on to the championship match. However, the ill fortunes began to tangle with Tennessee. Fernando Sanchez against Podbury, who had won the first set. Then Podbury begins to cramp up, and he cramps up so badly that, in fact, he had to default. So now it's three points to three. Peter Handoyle taking on Jose Sanchez. Jose Sanchez able to remain well hydrated. And then Peter Handoyle goes down so badly with crippling cramps that he has to default. And VCU goes from 2-3 down to 4-3 on a couple of defaults, and it ends up getting in for the championship match. Where, here's how we've whittled the field of 64 down to two. Stanford going for its 10th title in the last 15 years. And notice that VCU is just the fifth non-Pac-10 or Southeastern Conference team to reach the final. The other schools that have made it this far are collective 0 and 6. This matchup presents quite a contrast. Stanford seems to select more than recruit. Every year it seems to get so many great elite youth American players. And many other coaches feel that in order to compete with the Stanfords of the world, you have to go outside American borders, and that's what VCU has done. Well, Jack, there's so much question now. Who's going to take over for, for Sampras and Axie? Where's the next American? And I believe that to play the international players in the collegiate system is great for the Americans. We've got to step up and start beating these guys. VCU and Stanford, it's a great match with the international players versus the great Americans. Well, Daniel Anderson is the number one singles player for VCU. Yeah, Daniel Anderson's the guy who's playing, you know, Magnus Norman, who's the number one player in the world right now in the points race. He was serving for the match against this guy. Alex Kim, the American. This guy's a retriever. He had the number one junior player, actually collegiate player, Morrison, on the ropes last year and in the, last, in the semifinal and took him out because he's such a good counter puncher. This is a good style, the puncher and the international player in Anderson versus the counter puncher in Alex Kim. And in fact, all six of VCU singles players are international players and all six of Stanford's are Americans. VCU against Stanford for the national championship. Emotion and intensity. We're back in a flash.